morning. Good morning. Wow, happy Thanksgiving. It's just a great thing for us to be here together today. We're going to continue with where we stopped last week, and I'm sure you continued with wonderful celebrations and gatherings in your homes and, and with your friends and family. So uh, uh, this morning we have a few announcements for Community Moments. I think Mark must have one because he's right here, and I don't have a microphone. I, where is it? Right. They're pointing. Oh, it's back there. All right, we need, need to have that microphone so people will be heard. Thank you, Kim. Mark, go for it. Good morning. If you'll notice, our tree is set up. And I would like to thank our senior high youth. They did a phenomenal job getting that set up for us and bathing it in lights. And there's something wrong. There's something missing. Our tree is a little naked. What we are doing is, over the next two Sundays, we're inviting you to bring an ornament that's special from your home to our home. And during one of the hymns, Pastor Phil will announce that the ornaments can be brought up and we'll have people to put them on the tree for us. So we invite you to do that. And the second thing is, just a reminder, at four today we will be doing the hanging of the greens. So we will be decorating the church for the holiday season, and we invite all of you to come out and join us. We'll have a light meal at about 5 o'clock. Thank you. Great. I think there's a youth group announcement, too. Um, in the lobby over there, there will be uh, popcorn buckets that the senior high youth group is selling for charities money for the ASP trip. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank you. And uh, UMW announcement. All right, serve orders. Um, we've had a phenomenal year. It's our first year, a little bit of a learning curve. But um, our last order will be going in tomorrow afternoon. So if anyone still wants to look at a catalog, take it home with them and call me with an order. Um, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, let me see. I can read my notes here. I think that's it. No, nope, it's not. Hold on. <laughs> I, we had a couple, oops, um, we ordered um, a couple things too many. We have some extra virgin olive oil here for $7.50 if anyone's interested in it. And also have a kitchen towel for $10 if anybody's interested in that. So stop out and see us after church and thank everyone for their orders. Right. Any, any time after tomorrow afternoon, we, we place orders. Um, we can get free shipping after $300, but if, the, if it doesn't come to $300, we have to pay a graduated shipping tax. So if there's anyone that still wants to look at things and order it and we want to combine some orders, you know, you can split the shipping costs also later in the year. Anyway, thank everyone for all of their um, orders. Thank you, Joanne. Or you can just order $300 worth of stuff. And <laughs> that's, that's right. Hey, um, tomorrow night is our yearly church conference, and so I'd want to make sure everybody here knows about that. And It's a conference where we elect our leaders, where we establish the pastor's pay, and we, we identify people who are serving as lay speakers and, and, and just a few items that we take care of. But one of the real highlights this year is that our new district superintendent, Bill Haggart, will be with us uh, to meet us and get to know us a little bit. And so 7 o'clock tomorrow night in this place, join us. It'll be a, a relatively brief gathering. We'll have a devotional time, a little celebration of worship with our superintendent and the few matters of business that we have to transact. We've streamlined them greatly, so come and be a part of that moment. We'd love to have you with us. And there's some food too, right? What, right? Well, what time is the food? Six. Six. Check your bulletin and the staff parish meeting before that. So, great. Well, let's take a moment, greet our friends and neighbors, and I'll call you back in a minute for worship.
Please stand for the call to worship. You, O Lord, are more wonderful than our lips can proclaim. You have trusted us with the whole of the earth. And for everything we see under the care of our hands. Lord Almighty God, the earth is filled with your glory. So it is that we gather for worship. Praise be to God. Amen. Now let us join together for our hymn of gathering. We gather together. 131 in the hymnal or on the screen. join me with our opening prayer. Giver of all All things, things. we thank thank you you for health health and vigor, for the the air that that gives gives us breath of life, the the sun that warms us, and the good food that makes us strong, for happy homes and for the friends we love, for all that makes it good to live. Make us thankful and eager to repay by cheerfulness and kindness and And by our readiness readiness to to help help others. others. Freely Freely we have received. Let us us freely give in the name of the one who gave gave his life life for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I invite our children to come forward for a time with Mrs. Wood. Good morning. Good morning. What is all this orange stuff over here? What holiday did we just celebrate? Shout it out. Thanksgiving. Sure, Thanksgiving. How many people had turkey? How many people had family and friends over to their house? How many people went to somebody else's house? And how many people were thankful? That's great. But you know what's happening now? After Thanksgiving, something else happens. What's the next holiday? What is it? Christmas. Well, can anybody think of another holiday? Yeah? Uh, What comes after Thanksgiving? Jesus' birthday. Yeah, that's December, right? It's not December yet. Actually, the next time that we celebrate here in the church is called Advent. Has anybody heard of Advent before? We're getting ready for Advent because you can see we've got the Thanksgiving stuff over here and on the altar. But look, we've already got a Christmas tree. We're almost ready. But you know what I have a problem with? 
Black Friday, that crazy day after Thanksgiving. I have a real problem with that because Thanksgiving doesn't mean we go right to the birthday of Jesus, does it? No, we've got time, and we have something called Advent. And starting next week, we are going to be celebrating four special Sundays in Advent, and it's all about waiting. And Advent's hard because it's about patience. It's waiting for the birth of our Lord. How many people here are patient? Are you patient? How many people are more like me? They have, they have a hard time being patient. Yeah, well, we are going to talk about Advent, and we're going to get ready for the birth of Jesus, but it's not here yet. So we've got a lot of waiting to do. And I have a little poem for you. So if you'll let me get my iPad out. And in, in, in the wintertime before Christmas is my birthday. Yeah. Yes, everybody's looking, I know. Okay. Look at the candy cane, what do you see? Stripes that are red, like the blood shed for me. White is for my Savior, who's sinless and pure. J is for Jesus, my Lord, that's for sure. Turn it around, and a staff you will see. Jesus, my shepherd, was born for me. And so what Nicholas is going to do right now is he's going to pass out a candy cane to everybody. But here's the thing. I want you to be patient. I want you to take this candy cane home with you and not eat it. Oh. It will be hard. It will be hard. Maybe if you put it on your Christmas tree it might be easier. But I want you to see if you can be patient and wait until the birth of Jesus. Okay. okay. <laughs> let's let's see if you can be patient. So Nicholas is going to pass out a candy cane to everyone for me. Okay. And don't forget Pastor Phil. Yeah, so you can eat it on Christmas Eve. Yeah. Let's see. Can you be patient that long? Yeah? Okay. All right, up here. So maybe maybe part of our prayer should be for patience, huh? <laughs> That's true. That's true. Okay, do we have a candy cane out there with every every person? Okay, let's see if we can make it through the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> Thank you, Nicholas. Okay, um, let's close our eyes and have a moment of prayer as we share the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. Thank you for that. Time for us to pray together. Time for us to hold up the concerns, the joys that we have. <coughs> Elaine Vanderweer's birthday on Thanksgiving Day. Congratulations. Not every time, but this time. That's wonderful. Make sure you stop by and see her after service. Yes? You had a great day. No. How old is she? Am I allowed to say how old? Am I allowed to say how old? All right, 93. I don't know anybody that has a prettier smile than yours. <laughs> yeah, oh, jeez. Other prayers that we have. Anybody have a prayer that they want us to be thinking about today? Yes, I got a group of guys in my house. I, I was away at Gail's mom's and I came home and look what I found. <laughs> and the parsonage is still intact. They were like taken, they had football games in the backyard, and the backyard's a little tore up, but um, they were cleaning up the floor as I walked in. So it is such a treat to have these guys. It were work camp guys with me a couple of years ago, and, or a year and a half ago, and then they just keep showing up. And it's a treat for us. So good to see you guys. Thanks for mentioning it. Who else do we pray for today? Yes, Mark. All right, let's uh, remember Dick at this time, making some decisions medically. Uh, also, uh, a flare-up of Crohn's disease uh, in the hospital for six days recovering at home now. Elaine Murphy, so let's remember Elaine. Ellen, yes, oh, Ellen. Yes. That's right, all the military folks and thinking about those who are away during a holiday. And uh, so let's keep them in our prayers. Yes? I'd like to say thank you for all the prayers and concerns for my father. Um, they did a check yesterday on Friday. It is clearly not going to be good. Okay, continued prayers for your dad. Okay, as they deal with his health issues. Yes? I would just like to thank everybody for their prayers and concern on my illness. I also am very grateful to have my daughter, Penny Clark, return Thanksgiving night from serving in New Jersey with Red Cross. Oh, it's good to have her back, isn't it? And it's good to see you as well. Who else do we pray for today? Yes. All right, a new baby in Amy's life. Let's keep that family in our prayers. Yep. I'd like to uh, let our, uh, our college students, as they uh, finish their semester, we had a great visit yesterday with Thayer Ball. And some of the things they expressed just help to remember that uh, as they finish the semester, they came home, they had a chance to, uh, to visit, and now they got to go back and get back to the swing of things. And uh, they got finals coming up and all those things. And, you know, with... Uh, we had three, Kristen, Kayla, and Thayer, who are uh, graduates of our, our youth group, and they're, they're finishing their first semester, but we have other, other college students who are, uh, I would just like to have them kept in our prayers. That's right. That's right. I saw Chris someplace over here today. Oh, over here, he's dealing with it, and these guys are all college guys, and we've got others in the room as well. So, oh, there's Abigail's out there, college gal. So, there's a lot of folks here that are dealing with those st those stresses and pressures, so... Keep them in our thoughts. Who else? Other prayers that we have? Yes. Jerry. Um, refugee situation in various parts of the world. I just heard on the radio coming over here, like in uh, Congo, actually they're going to Rwanda. There's thousands of people that are being displaced because of the violence there. And, uh, and also for all of the uh, workers that are trying to help, uh, you know, like Oxfam and some of the other uh, organizations that are trying to, trying to help. They like one for the 
well, and we see it, um, glimpses of it on the news. But as we celebrate our Thanksgiving in wonderful settings, there are people on the move in many parts of the world, from the Middle East and all the things that have been going on there, to the Congo and in other parts of the Far East as well. And so let's keep those folks in our prayers. Yes. All the tra- That's right. Lots of traveling that has begun already and will continue many ways through the rest of the holiday season. Thanks, Abigail. Others that we hold up today? Anybody else we're remembering today? That's, uh, oh yes. Keep Marion in our prayers. Anybody else? Yes. Let's keep Jan in our prayers, diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's syndrome. Anybody else that we hold up today? Let's come together in prayer. Let's start with our prayer song. Precious and wonderful Lord, this time of thanksgiving, as we push away from the tables of our family gatherings and all the places of of celebration, we just, Lord, we, we just say thank you. We are mindful of many ways in which you have touched us and helped us in our daily living, and we ask, Lord, that you would remind us today once again of the, of the most core reasons for our thankfulness. Help us, Lord, in the midst of all kinds of circumstances to be able to, to firmly claim a thankful heart. Lord, bless us in all the ways in which our lives turn, in all the directions that we may go. Help us each and every day to see you and recognize that there is nothing in heaven or on earth that can separate us from your great love in Jesus Christ. Hear our prayers, Lord, for those who find themselves in want. Lord, be with those who are alone. Lord, be with those, as Jerry would remind us, who are moving right now and home is uncertain. 
Hear our prayers, Lord, for the other churches of our community and churches that span the globe. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. Let's stand and sing our second hymn, Morning Has Broken. come forward to receive the offerings of a thankful people. Yeah, but it isn't something you can write down like, well, like a grocery list. You've got to feel it down deep before you can really be thankful for anything. Everybody likes to make something special out of a special day.
Precious Lord, these gifts which are placed here today, symbols of our efforts, so many kinds of efforts throughout this room, Lord. May these gifts go to serve your kingdom in new ways, in positive, good, uplifting ways. In your name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 13. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, be prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all, understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have received, revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. The pilgrims who landed on Plymouth Rock, as we talked about it with the children last week, knew nothing of the affluent times which you and I enjoy today in this great country, this this fine land of ours. The next time we're tempted to complain about inflation or the state of our economy, we might well remember things like what we read on the board here during the offering, that the first long winter at Plymouth Colony, seven times as many graves were dug for the dead as homes were built for the living. Or maybe maybe you knew, but the, the ship which was to bring food and relief supplies brought 35 more mouths to feed and not an ounce of provisions. I find it very moving when I picture William Brewster rising from a Plymouth dinner consisting of a plate of clams and a glass of cold water to thank God for the abundance of the sea and the treasures hidden in the sand, as he would say. The pilgrims didn't have much, but they possessed a deep-seated gratitude And what we all too often forget is that it was upon this core value that our country was built. These amazing people, these strong, devout, sincere people were the framing timbers which would establish the template for our great nation. Sometimes it seems to me that it's the the people who might least, that we might least expect to be giving thanks are the very ones who are the most thankful. Some people who don't seem to show even an ounce of gratitude might ought to be thanking God with every heartbeat and every breath. Let me illustrate for you perhaps what I mean. Some time ago, Reader's Digest uh, uh, did an informal survey of the honesty of citizens in dozens of major cities around the world. They gave over 1,100 volunteers, they gave them wallets with up to $50 cash in each wallet. 
Each wallet also contained the name and a telephone number of that particular volunteer. And the volunteers left the wallets in cabs and in restaurants, public restrooms and in phone booths and churches and on sidewalks everywhere they could think of. Then the volunteers recorded how many wallets were returned and how much cash was in them when they came back. Every single wallet, including all the cash, was returned in the country of Norway and Denmark. 90% of the wallets were returned in Singapore. Only 67% of the wallets were returned in the United States. Of those who returned the wallet, three factors seemed to motivate their honesty. Empathy, a good example from their parents, and their spiritual life, their religious faith. One woman in Germany explained that her parents taught her to value honesty. A a Muslim woman claimed that her faith made her turn away from the temptation. A woman from Russia quoted the Ten Commandments in explaining why she returned the wallet. Volunteers often caught a glimpse of those who, who took the wallet and never returned them. To their surprise, many of the the wallets that were never returned were taken by people who looked like they didn't even need the money. In contrast, those who returned the wallets were often poor. One young man who returned a wallet was unemployed and looking for cans and bottles to recycle. And yet he returned the wallet intact with all the money. Another honest man was a a waiter in Switzerland who recently fled his war-torn homeland. Don't you think that's interesting? Well-dressed, affluent people often kept the lost wallets while poor people with basic needs unmet returned them. We can't know by simply looking at people whether they're honest or not. Though often we, we make that mistaken assumption, we, we also can't know how thankful people are by looking at their outward circumstances. In fact, I'll make a generalization I suspect that on this Thanksgiving day, a few days back, money and financial blessings was not the central focus of the most meaningful holiday celebrations. Some people who've been visibly blessed beyond measure won't seem to have a grateful bone in their body, while some others who've been dealt blow after blow after blow will seem to be overwhelming in their thankfulness. 1993, Robert Green was severely injured in a head-on car accident. He spent weeks in a coma and over a year in rehab before he was able to leave the hospital. During this grueling, painful time, Robert wrote a wonderful letter to his mother listing the ten different reasons that he was thankful for his situation. Reason number three to be thankful, he wrote, I have good strength in my arms. This helps me move with the wheelchair and helps me walk with crutches, he writes. Reason number six to be thankful. Nearly everything I have experienced has been of value and support to me. Reason number ten to be thankful. I'm thankful for the future, for it holds not a promise but a challenge and an opportunity. Thankful that he can get around in a wheelchair and on crutches? Thankful for months of recovery? I I think some might wonder what kind of a nut this person is. Doesn't he know that he, he should be cursing God rather than thanking God? Perhaps that's the message of our culture. The famous author and speaker Dale Carnegie once went through a period of prolonged depression Carnegie did something really unusual to shake himself out of that mood that he was in. He visualized what it would be like to lose everything important to him. He even sat down and wrote a list detailing each tragedy. The list went something like this. My children are in jail. My wife has left me. I'm flat broke. My health is ruined. Well, after writing the list, Carnegie 
marked through each item that wasn't true. In the process, he eliminated the whole list. Once he established that the worst-case scenario wasn't happening, he found that he was more able to refocus on the positives again. His depression began to lift. Maybe that would be a good exercise for all of us. Make a list of all the bad things that could happen in our lives. Then maybe we'd have a deeper appreciation for how many good things we really do have. Many years ago, there was a doctor who was asked to visit a woman who had been hospitalized following a devastating accident. She was angry, she was bitter, and she was depressed. And The doctor tried to comfort her, but the woman rejected every positive thing he said. According to him, her philosophy seemed to be, this is the day that the devil has made, let us complain and be miserable about it kind of a backwards twist on something we often say in this room. Even after the woman recovered fully, her negative attitudes remained. Surprise, surprise. On the other hand, the same doctor tells of another woman named Helen who spent her life in pain from a rare nerve disorder. But she gives thanks every day for a chance to witness to others through her illness. She even thanks God for the strength she's gained through her troubles. Do we understand the true meaning of thanksgiving? Paul writes in Philippians 4, think about all you can praise God for and be glad about it. I think that might be what Thanksgiving Day might be all about. It's not simply about family and feasting and football. It's, it's about stopping for a few moments, counting the blessings, and if need, adjust our attitudes accordingly. I, I think that if we really started counting our blessings, we'd have a need to say thank you to someone. The Second World War. A mother in Cincinnati received a letter from her son who was a paratrooper in his letter, he spoke of a woman in a small town in Normandy who'd taken him in to her house when he was wounded, and, and he, she hid him from the Germans. Tragically, later on, this, this same young man was then later on killed in another battle, but this mother could not let go of the courageous act, the compassion which had been shown to her son in Normandy. She saved up for two years so she could make a trip to Europe, and she, she crossed the Atlantic, and she went to this small village named in her son's letter, and she found a woman who had sheltered her son. And the wife of an impoverished farmer is what she found. And then she, she pressed into this woman's hand a package. It was a golden wristwatch her son had received for his high school graduation. It was really the only object of any value that her son really had owned. The mother's act of gratitude so touched the hearts of the people in that community that the story of this woman who had crossed the ocean in her gratitude became somewhat of a legend to the people of that village in Normandy. When we feel someone has done something important for us, we have this deep need to say thank you. Perhaps for you it's thank you to your parents or your grandparents if if we can, for all the sacrifices they've made for us. Maybe it's someone else. Some would say thank you to the men and women of the ages who've made just amazing sacrifices that we might have freedom and, and faith. Some are thankful for those who have painstakingly spent hours in science and, and medicine and the arts and all the positive, creative, necessary activities of human order to get things where they are today. 
and make this world a better place. You know, we didn't get to where we are on our own. Winston Churchill once said, Never have so many owed so much to so few. But I might shift the words and say, Never have so many owed so much to so many. Imagine all the shoulders upon which we stand today. Us as individuals. Those of us as a church. A nation. For the opportunities that we have. There are a multitude of blessings beyond our ability to count. And of course, most of all, we are thankful for the gift of the one. Not just the many. The gift that God has given us, that God loves us so very much. The one who becomes for us the clearest revelation of love, Jesus Christ. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, I can never stop thanking God for all the wonderful gifts that you have given me now that you are Christ. He has enriched your whole life. And Jesus has enriched our lives too. And so we're here this day. This is a day to say thank you. It's kind of like we have it, sometimes I think backwards, we, we come to the table and we gather as a family and we say thank you for the food that's before us. We have a couple of prayers we'll say like, God is great, God is good. But to come away from the table, having received, giving thanks again. And this Sunday, as we come off of this, this holiday of Thanksgiving, to step away and look back and to say, I had an opportunity to spend with my children, my family, my friends. Thank you, God. It's so good. Saying thank you doesn't perhaps sound like much, but when it reflects the truth of our heart, it means absolutely everything. Sometimes it's all we have. Has anybody ever given you a gift beyond measure? And you were almost stripped bare. You didn't have anything you could give that was of equal value in return. Maybe a grandparent handed you that check that, that bought your freedom from debt. Or a parent that paid your way through school no way to return it. All you had were those words. Thank you. It's those kinds of moments that we come the closest to understanding what it is that we can say to God as we stand before God who's given us a gift beyond measure. Dr. C. Thomas Hilton tells about a, a British housekeeper who became quite ill and entered the hospital for treatment. While there, she met and befriended Johnny, a little boy with a terminal illness. One day, Johnny's mother burst into the housekeeper's room with the news that Johnny would not survive the day. Would the housekeeper please leave her own room and come down to his to talk to him? And she said, yes. She sat down and she said, listen, Johnny, God made you. God loves you. And God wants you to come home now. Johnny said, just say it again. Just, just say it again with the few words that he could muster. And she told him, God made you and God loves you. God is ready for you to come home now. And he said, tell God, thank you for me. Do you see what I mean? Do you really understand what it means to be grateful for all that God has given us? That we would take a moment and we would pause in the midst of our lives truly understand what it is to, 
to have received something that we cannot really return. Thanksgiving. More than turkey and even more than families gathered around a table and, and more than a, a country who, that is served and given to us in so many great ways. Thanksgiving. Thank you. Amen. Let's thank God with hymn number 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Now let us go from this place in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen.